Hi, my name is I Read Old Magazines. Um, I'll have an introduction later on, but I'm just simply introducing this article that I'm about to read. It connects what was the third largest uh, Anglo-Israeli media empire in the world under Lord Conrad Black, who was a British Lord steering committee of the Bilderberg Group, um, major influence on the Nixon Center. His resume is uh, very long and very ominous. Eventually, this event that we're about to read about collapsed this entire organization. It is a world historical event. It is the 9-11 of corporate uh, destruction. And you can hear later on, I jump around a lot in my description, but this article connects Conrad Black, who I've been saying for years is one of the principal figures behind the Trump campaign. It connects Conrad Black with the Anglo-American establishment, like the Rockefellers and Rothschilds, which was already well known, but it connects him to this MI6 Israeli um, pedophile ring that's being run by Jeff Epstein. And the great thing about this article is it places all of these people in the same room, and it also gives you this idea that there's a pecking order within these people because there's it, that might be able to be found in court documents. Court documents. Because it provides, this Guardian article provides seating arrangements, a seating plan based on pecking order at this party. And so you have Trump, you have the Lauders, you have the Maxwells, you have Henry Kissinger, you have the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, um, probably Bronfman's, Mort Zuckerman, uh, Michael Bloomberg, all sorts of people who you wouldn't expect to all be in the same room. They're all in the same room together, but not only that, the fact that this is the 9-11 of corporate uh, of uh, international, multinational corporate media empire, which brought forth both the Whitewater scandals and all of the blackmail scandals against the Clintons and also helped destroy the peace talks between Yasser Arafat and, um, and, and Israel. And like I said, later on, there's going to be a larger, what I initially had as the introduction, which just jumps around willy-nilly. Um, I'm going to put that at the end. You don't have to watch the entire thing to get the full effect of this. Uh, this is simply for researchers or anybody who's interested. But here we go. Here's the article. Happy birthday, Barbara. Um, okay. Even by the exacting social standards of Conrad Black, it was a gathering of quite staggering opulence. There were six billionaires in the room, plus a Rockefeller Rothschild, a selection of America's top broadcasters, and a comedian famed for dressing in drag as an aging Australian dowager. Court documents in America have shed new light on an infamous surprise. 60th birthday party thrown by Lord Black for his wife Barbara Amiel in December 2000 at a cost of 62 thousand eight hundred sixty nine dollars and fifty seven cents the ire of shareholders and prosecutors alike lord blacks only tossed twenty thousand into the pot billed for forty two um, thousand to his company hollinger international as a business expense for many people of the 94 present paying the bill would have barely have warranted a footnote in a monthly bank statement the richest man in the room was Michael Bloomberg, the financial information wizard turned mayor of New York, whose fortune is estimated by Forbes magazine at $5.5 billion. He broke bread at the same table at the, as the private equity magnate Henry Kravitz, who was worth $2.6 billion, although both of them apparently only turned up for dessert. Elsewhere in the room was the flamboyant property developer Donald Trump, $2.9 billion, and Donald Lauder, the philanthropist son of the late cosmetics tycoon Estee Lauder. Now, there's an article by Whitney Webb 
that I think I mentioned in what was originally supposed to be the intro to this, the ladders are all connected into the Trump mob, the Roy Cohn mob, um, and all of that, and, and the mega group. So your two richest people other than uh, Bloomberg and Kravis are Donald Trump and this uh, Lauder guy. And it might not be Donald Lauder. They might have made a mistake. It might be Leonard Lauder, but I don't know. Continuing. Completing the Billionaires Club, the New York Daily News publisher Mort Zuckerman, who has a $2.8 billion to his name, and Alfred Taubman, the Sawther Bees chairman worth $2 billion, who was sent to jail in 2002 for price fixing. So I'm going to skip a couple of these things because it's about the restaurants they used and uh, the $320 bottle Don Perignon champagne. I don't want to get hungry again reading all of this. So here we go. The seating plan gives you clues on how everybody fitted into the social event ranking. Lord Conrad Black, who claims he was striking business deals at the event, was surrounded by Vogue editor Anna Wintour, the Dame Edna Everidge impersonator, Barry Humphreys, and Clutch of Celebrity Wise, including Sir Evelyn de Rothschild's spouse, Lynn Forrester de Rothschild, and Henry Ford's second widow, or Henry the Ford's the second's widow, Kate. Others at the host table included Society Doyen, Ariana von Hohenlohe, and Ahmed Ertugun, a music impresario who wrote the song Sweet 16 and who died in 2006 after suffering a fall at a Rolling Stones conference. Birthday girl Barbara Ann Mayo, who once remarked that her extravagance knows no bounds, chose slightly more heavyweight companions. Her table included the legendary statesman Henry Kissinger, who was Hollinger's director and is now listed as possible prosecution witness in the husband's trial. They exchanged pleasantries with Donald Trump, the news anchor Peter Jennings, who subsequently died in 2005, the former New Yorker editor Tina Brown, and Bill Clinton's one-time close advisor Vernon Jordan. Now, I'm going to interject another editorial, but I just remembered that Conrad Black was one of few people that attended Donald Trump's wedding. So they're not just these loose business associates. Um, they were actually fairly close, and... Um, I guess you can find those connections elsewhere, so I'm not going to go into them. Going on, just how much business took place during the event is moot point. Prosecutors say that the party was little more than a lavish social event at hauling and shareholders' expense, but lawyer, Lord Black's lawyer, Edward Genson, has pointed out that many of these present people were media people, and thus he maintains there was legitimate networking to be done by then Daily Telegraph owner. But the former Telegraph managing director, Jeremy Deeds, once described Miss Amiel as a five-star girl who needs five-star maintenance. Her party provided just that. A calligraphy firm, Scribe Inc., was paid $569 to write the menus, place settings, and table numbers. An opera singer gave a recital from Carmen and Samson and Delilah. With the exception of Lord Black's nephew, Nephew Dole, and a couple of senior Hollinger executives, barely anybody at the event could be considered a civilian member of the public. On table number one, nearest the opera singer, dress designer Oscar de Laurenta passed with time with Robert Maxwell's daughter, Gisseline, and a prominent New York chat show host, Charlie Rose. So here you have Israeli uh, MI6 agent Robert Maxwell's daughter, Gisseline Maxwell, who was procuring women for Jeff Epstein and the mega group. Here at table number one. On another table, television presenter Barbara Walter ate with Drew Hines, widow of the ketchup boss H.J. Hines II, and the president of New York's Federal Reserve, William McDonald. Others in the room included New York Review of Books Robert, founder Robert Silvers, the legendary gossip columnist Helene Maley, Maley, who used to go by the pen name Susie, and Midge Decker, an ultra-conservative writer known recently for the writing of a book in defense of Donald Rumsfeld, in which he argued passionately for the former defense secretary's manliness. The publisher, Lord Wiedenfeld, was there, as well as Happy Rockefeller, the widow of one-time U.S. Vice President Nelson Rockefeller. Hedge fund uh, pioneer Dixon Broadman rubbed shoulders with private equity tycoons John Belanus and Don Maron, the late editor of Time magazine, Henry Grunewald, sat alongside Elaine Wolfenson, 
wife of the World Bank boss, Jane Wilkinson. Now here's where Epstein comes in. Surprise! Like Lord Black, some guests have since suffered a taste of scandal. Jeff Epstein, a mobile phones millionaire on Table 3, was charged last year with soliciting prostitutes for sex in Florida, and according to Lord Newspaper Reports, from police investigation documents, has highly usual tastes, unusual tastes in massage. For light relief, Lord Black invited the spectator columnist Taktai Theodorakopoulos, who has since written that prior to the event, he spoiled the surprise by drunkenly blurting out warning of the party to Lord Conrad Black's wife. In the spectator column, Taki recently made it clear that he was unimpressed by the evening. He said, the party was, as far as I'm concerned, a flop. No loose women around. It was full of business men that uh, Conrad Black did business with, like Leonard Lauder, who was a big advertiser in Black's papers. Donald Trump, the ghastly Richard Pearl, another prominent in Wall Street and D.C. If that party wasn't a legitimate business expense, I am Monica Lewinsky. So, all of these people are under the same roof at this event that destroyed the third largest media corporation in the world at the time, which is an Anglo-Israeli media organization founded by British intelligence um, for the purpose of smuggling arms. Does business with the Iran Contra people, um, like Adonai Khashoggi, and basically run by the Anglo-American establishment. This is the true group that is leading the blackmail operations that are going on. It is not simply the Israeli Mossad. But this is what you're not allowed to know about. This is what even the LaRouche movement are covering up. Even though this is all of their own information, they're covering it up now to serve what they think is an opportunity to get Lyndon LaRouche, who's dead now, pardoned, and gain... Um, Man, I hate words sometimes. Vindication for the LaRouche movement. Now, as far as this goes, I might say it in the other thing, but you have the Maxwells, you have the Lauders, you have Richard Pearl, you have Jeffrey Epstein, Donald Trump. You don't see Clinton see. You see a former Clinton advisor and plenty of those guys were actually there to undermine the Clinton presidency. Um, I think Dick Morris might have been one of them, if I remember Dick Morris. I think Dick Morris was a Clinton defector, and the guy's related to Roy Cohn. He's part of the Roy Cohn mob. So, there's uh, other things if you want to look into, you know, right now I've identified two major factions. That's the mega group and this group. Like the mega group and the Conrad Black, Black group is one group. Scape Networks is another group. And then there is the Blackstone group and Felix Rohatton, which ties back into the Bush family uh, to the Municipal Assurance Corporation and the Lehman Brothers and all of that. that, that that's another distinct group of, um, of influence on Trump. And I think one of the other things we talk about the LaRouches is that the LaRouche people back in the 2000s organized a Felix Rohatton is a Nazi protest. And when they were doing this protest, Donald Trump was having a, a meal with uh, Felix Rotenton. And uh, this is the guy that runs the finances of New York City. It's a very important guy. And I guess that, you know, that was uh, maybe the first time Donald Trump met or saw the LaRouche movement. Maybe he got ideas. 
from the Rouge movement about how to do things, but, um, you know, like, I, you can find meetings that show, yes, these people have these connections, um, but then when you go back, you backtrace and you trace all of the connections, um, like things like Stephen Schwartzman, like, why, how does this guy know Trump, what are the networks that are putting this influence on Trump, you can, you can find all of those things and you can find a factual support for them. Now, it's hard to find instances where people actually make agreements or that you know what those agreements are, but um, the fact that this birthday bash was all of these close business, business uh, people with, with Conrad Black, and the fact that Conrad Black then goes to Donald Trump's wedding is one of the very few people that are invited. Um, it's it's a lot more telling. Uh, and the fact that Conrad Black is, is one of those Mar-a-Lago Mar or, or Palm Beach guys and live within walking distance of Epstein and Trump Despite the fact that there's no, like Conrad Black pretends to not be an insider, he, he pretends to make these kinds of speculative comments on Trump. The guy's been working with him for a long time. He knows the guy pretty well. So I just thought that was interesting. Um, a lot of this is probably babble, but I hope you found the article interesting, and I'll add on my other commentary later on. Thanks.